Hi, this is part 11 of this Arc Alert training video series. In this training video, we're going to talk about our modeling uh, with calibration for uh, City of Port St. Lucie and uh, City of Stewart and the Martin County. Um, so here's the background of this modeling. Oh, by the way, this is uh, what we did, and this is uh, reports and papers um, for this uh, modeling effort. Um, the technical report is again available on the project website and um, this is the report we wrote and then based on the report we have a journal article we published in the uh, journal of environmental earth science and this is background of modeling so the city of port st lucie city of stewart and the martin county removed a large number of safety tanks and they want an estimate of the amount of nitrogen removal so that the amount can be um, counted as a credit for TMDL for the cities and the county. Um, because the safety tank were already remo removed, it's too late to install monitoring wells for measuring uh, nitrogen concentration and, and also the cities and the county uh, didn't have resources to install um, the monitoring wells. So we had to use um, historical data for model calibration. So in this modeling, we use Arclet V2, which is Arclet V1 and uh, uh, the um, function of uncertainty analysis. Um, at that time, the Arclet V3 uh, was not developed. Um, well, even um, e if the Arclet V3 had been developed, we would still would not have used it due to lack of set specific data. And you can see this later on in the, in the training video. Um, those are uh, locations of the re removed safety tank, and so the city of Stewart removed about 5,600 safety tanks in the city limit, and the city of Stewart removed uh, um, a 146 safety tanks in the city of Stewart, and the Martin County removed 1,087 um, safety tanks from uh, five sites so those are yellow uh, symbols for the uh, safety tank removed by the county of, uh, of by, the, by the martin county and so um, when we do the modeling this is essentially the same procedure you saw before but here i added um, this item so you need first compile historical data there is no on-site date there's no uh, uh, data collected for this um, modeling effort so we have to use historical data and then um, we have to select the the calibration data for the um, calibration then we calibrate arcolit and then um, use it to simulate nitrogen transport and estimate the nitrogen load from uh, those remote removed safety tank we also conducted among the color simulation to address uncertainty in model parameters because we the whole training video uh, did not talk about uh, uncertainty analysis so I will not talk about results about this Monte Carlo simulation um, so for this project we have a lot of help from the city and county and FDP staff they give us a lot of data and information that is useful to set up the model and uh, calibrate the model and then for the historical data we essentially collect those from a DB Hydro that's a, a data portal managed managed by the South Florida Water Management District. We also collect the number of data from this hydro or his hydrologic information system managed by the Consortium of Universities for Advancement of uh, Hydrologic Science. Um, this his website uh, actually they com uh, they uh, is a data portal, so you can use it to search for data um, collected by USGS, EPA, or any uh, government agency for the area of our modeling. And we also have um, uh, data from technic technical reports from Steve Krupa uh, at the uh, South Florida Water Management District. And we also have data from the reports of uh, Tom Blanger at the Florida Institute of Technology. He has uh, a focus on safety tank in, um, in his career and retired several years ago. Um, so we compile, we first compile the surface water quality because that's the concern to the city and the county, cities and county. Um, so the um, city, um, Dale from the city of Port St. Lucie provide us the surface water quality measured at 21 
uh, station. Uh, this is Salusi. This is the north part of Salusi River, and there are canals in this area too. And so we analyzed uh, 14 the data from 14 stations located in the septang removal area. Um, those are highlighted in, in on this figure. Um, so this uh, surface water uh, data show that for all the 14 stations the TN concentration is higher than the TMDL target. This is TN concentration plotted for the 14 stations and this is the uh, TMDL standard is 0.74 milligram per liter. You can tell the TN concentration uh, in the surface water have already received uh, or exceeded the um, uh, TMDL target and this is mainly because of TKN which is the uh, organic uh, uh, nitrogen uh, if you look at the NOx concentration this is uh, uh, nitrate and nitrite together uh, the concentration is um, most for most station the concentration are uh, smaller than the TMDL target except one but be careful those data are not groundwater data they are surface water data so um, the concentra the uh, nitrogen concentration in surface water and groundwater they are very different um, because surface water has more organic uh, nitrogen than groundwater um, and then we compiled uh, data from uh, Belanger's report, and he measured um, the concentration or hydraulic head at the site, actually uh, north to the study site. Well, actually, I'm sorry, this is uh, in the study site. This is Salusi County boundary, so he has uh, measurement data here. And so essentially, you can tell those are our, um, time series of the uh, data, and um, the red color represents groundwater and uh, green color represents surface water. So gen generally speaking, groundwater level are higher than river stage, uh, indicating that groundwater discharge to surface water. Uh, that's what we're expecting in the arc lit modeling. Uh, but at station SL, uh, SLLT is right here and also L, uh, SLPD um, so groundwater and surface water they're all about uh, almost at the same level and here even groundwater is uh, sometime lower than the surface water um, so there may be a couple reasons um, like um, groundwater pumping tidal effect or uh, wind effect so we don't know exactly what's the reason for it but overall we can say uh, this is uh, this this data indicating groundwater uh, discharge to surface waters that can be modeled by Archilid. And we also have some concentration data from Blander's report. Um, he did a, a very site specific data um, and he chose three neighbor uh, three houses, uh, actually two residential houses and one apartment. So he developed this uh, monitoring network. You see those are locations of uh, sampling wells and this is a plane view, this is the uh, 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 vertical cross section and, and those data are very useful for us understanding um, the uh, 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 groundwater uh, nitrogen um, concentrations but there's one problem and those um, locations are uh, those uh, residential or those houses are located in North Indian River County which is far from our modeling site so those data can only be used uh, for us to understand uh, the system but they cannot be used for calibration um, so um, this is the those are three houses uh, named by probably by the owner of the house and uh, and they have uh, three sampling area in 2009 uh, January, March, and uh, f uh, uh, June, and so for three houses, um, and they have uh, multiple sites, and so those are box plot for the data they um, they obtain. Um, so this column plot for a no X, and this column plots for an H four, and be careful that the scale are different. So for nitrate, the maximum is fifteen. For ammonium, the uh, maximum is five zero uh, is five. Um, so some uh, for um, the um, uh, Huey and Los uh, uh, Lonibos, um two locations. Um, the ammonium concentration are higher 
than the nitrate concentration for uh, the um, Grim Grimms. Uh, this is a paramin complex. The uh, uh, nitrogen uh, uh, NOx concentration is higher than ammonium concentration. So this is similar to what we talk about uh, in part 11 um, because of um, those houses are so close to surface water body and the water uh, table is shallow and the nitrification process may not be completed so they uh, detected both uh, ammonium and nitrate and relatively high ammonium so in this case uh, for this site um, we probably should model both ammonium and nitrate but we didn't model ammonium in, 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 in this modeling effort for two reasons. Number one, this site is far away from uh, the um, modeling area. And, and then the second, actually the more important reason, is that we do not have any ammonium data for calibration. So we just uh, didn't calibrate or didn't simulate ammonium uh, and only simulated uh, nitrate in our arcalate modeling. And then we, uh, uh, those are historical data. Um, some were, some are far away from site. Some are on the site. Um, so we had to uh, select what data to uh, use for calibration. So we first uh, get the data from water table, and so we have number of wells, and those are time series of groundwater level at those wells. And you can tell that um, the although the water table is fluctuating, but there is no uh, significant trend. So we did this uh, Manhattan candle test to detect whether there is a trend statistically except at uh, location or well location STL2514 um, at this site there is a trend uh, on other site statistically we didn't detect any trend so uh, for this SL um, STL214 that's right here for this color um, although statistically um, there should be trend but do, you do not see the trend it's pretty much if you do a linear regression and this is almost like a horizontal line so um, based on this analysis we th think it's reasonable to assume that system is in steady state uh, for long run uh, we also compiled the site specific data for nitrogen but unfortunately the observation or measurements of nitrogen concentration are extremely scarce. Um, so we only found four data in the city of Port St. Lucie and one data in Martin County. There was no data for uh, city of Stewart. And, and, and those data are pretty old. Let's say the data from well PG-12, this is a uh, USGS well. Actually, all the wells are uh, USGS wells. And, and the data were measured in the period of 1976 to 1977. Um, but for other um, data, they were measured in 2008. Uh, so those are measured value uh, of the NOx and ammonium concentration and so on and so forth. So um, for this site, it would be very useful to have a more recent data for simulation. Um, and then after we select calibration data, oh, by the way, we use the TN, total nitrogen, um, and or the DIN, the dissolved inorganic nitrogen, as our calibration target. Although ammonium is high, nitrate is low, but uh, we didn't consider ammonium, we just consider um, the TN or DIN, whichever is reported uh, in the USGS reports or for the USGS data. And then we set up the model. So all the GS data needed for arcalate modeling are available in the public domain or from local environmental agencies. I will not talk about it, but one thing is that uh, the canal data are very important because this area is heavily drained by canals and those are local canal data. So we merge it with the uh, NHD data. So let's say this is a river and definitely uh, wider than the um, uh, canal, uh, the, the data in the canal data site. And then after we set up the model, we conducted model calibration. So first, um, we uh, calibrate the flow model to determine the smoothing factor. Uh, you can tell um, those are, um, w this is for the city of uh, Port St. Lucie, and this is for the city of Stewart. And this calibration looks pretty good. 
uh, by the way, there is no data for the Martin County. And you see here, uh, this is again the measured water level. This is smooth DM. Default this is uh, this one to one line, and same thing here. Um, so we think based on this, we believe that the uh, flow model can be well calibrated. And then uh, for the transport model, the calibration are not that satisf satisfactory. Um, so we have five data, and those are measured concentration. Those are simulated concentration. For those three wells, the fit actually pretty pretty good. So you can see that the data um, are almost fall into this one to one line. That means. Uh, measured concentration and simulated concentration are almost uh, exactly the same, but for these two wells, uh, definitely, definitely the model um, overestimated the simulation value, and so this is a simulated plume. So we do not know exactly how to reduce those concentration. We could, we could reduce the concentration, but it will. Um, require us to change some parameters dramatically, like denitrification, denitrification rate or dispersivity. So we didn't try that. Uh, otherwise, we are not confi uh, confident that the calibrated value, even in match data, but it may not be able to um, represent the system of interest. Um, so this is not perfect calibration for transport. Um, but the data are so scarce and so um, little, so the calibration may not be that critical, although uh, the, mi the mismatch may not be that critical to challenge the reliability of our load estimation, but there's definitely a question mark here. And then we simulate the um, concentration uh, or um, uh, uh, the plumes of nitrate and then one thing we uh, did, and, and the results are very interesting, uh, because of uh, uh, we talk about the surface water data, and then we have the um, the uh, the concentration of nitrogen in surface water body, and then we have the groundwater load um, corresponding to those um, uh, monitoring station, and then we um, estimate those load, and we try to compare the estimated load with the median nitrogen concentration and you can see that for the 14 station monitoring station and there is a very strong uh, correlation that means uh, the high concentration of uh, um, nitrogen in surface water body may be attributed to the groundwater nitrogen load because of this uh, strong correlation here and uh, this is something very interesting um, to observe and um, and also we simulated the uh, nitrogen concentration. This is for per Salusi area, and we also simulated for um, uh, city of Stuart and five other sites in Martin County. And definitely we see the spatial variability for different modeling site. If you look at this Seagate Harbor area, and you see all the septic uh, tanks are really really close to those canals. Um, and therefore, uh, there is a short travel distance from septic tank to surface water body. That means there is a very small amount of um, denitrification, so the reduction ratio is only about 10%. But for another site, it's called Hobbs Sound, and the distance between septic tank and surface water body is um, uh, relatively far and so there is uh, enough time and space for denitrification so the reduction ratio is about 70 percent and those two sites are located in the Martin County um, and we are based on those simulation results we try to have some general understanding of what controls uh, load estimates and we found several factors one is the mean length of the flow pass so um, uh, you can see this figure. This is a mean length. So you have many, many septic tanks, and each septic tank has a length um, along a flow path from septic tank to surface water body. You just take the average, and then you also take the average of the um, nitrogen loading, and you can see clearly here 
when the uh, mean length of the flow path, that means long travel path between septic tanks and surface water body, the larger the mean length, the smaller the load. And this is a trend that we observe. And this is um, this can be easily understood because if you have a long uh, mean length, uh, that means you have more room for denitrification. Therefore, your load will be small. And then we also examine the mean velocity. So here you can see the mean velocity increase this way, and then the nitrogen load also increase correspondingly. And this is also easy to understand. So you have a higher velocity. That means you have a short travel time. That means you have less time for denitrification. Therefore, the load is higher. So, um, so when you do the um, management and you want to find out a hot spot, you want to look at the areas um, uh, close to water body or the areas with a, f a, f a higher um, velocity, groundwater velocity. And we also uh, look at the uh, drainage condition. Um, this is for the Port St. Lucie area, and we have the CERGO database, and, and it tells us about the drainage condition. So from very poorly drained to excessively uh, drained. So this is uh, very poorly drained to excessively drained, and this is the total amount of uh, the nitrogen loading. You can tell when whenever you have a um, if the drainage condition improves, uh, that means the loading just uh, uh, increase. Uh, this is also easy to understand because if it's excessively uh, drained area, that means the travel time will be small. If the travel time is small, there is less time for denitrification. Therefore, your loading will increase. And um, the numbers here uh, are the number of septic tank for each drainage condition. Um, and then we also compare our modeling results with those reported to literature. And so here we use uh, reduction ratio because this one is um, it's sort of like a scale, uh, scaleless um, a dimensionless variable is uh, um, independent of the number of septic tank, independent of uh, uh, the uh, distance, uh, whatever. So this is just how much nitrogen or nitrate is removed by denitrification. So we have the uh, uh, work by Ryder at uh, FDOH and, and for his study at uh, Okivia site, the reduction ratio is about 70%. And then uh, 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 Valela is in. Uh, they studied uh, the lo uh, septic tank loading in a in a bay in uh, Maryland. He reported fifty seven percent, and another site they reported sixty five to eighty five, and those are simulated by our model. And you can tell our model um, that those numbers are within the range given by people. Right? So except there are some cases like a uh, Seagate Harbor and North River Shore, the reduction ratio is really is, is really small just simply because the distance to the safety tank. So it's just so close to uh, I'm sorry, the distance between safety tank and surface water body and because this distance is so small, whatever uh, load to groundwater just load to uh, surface water body with a really small amount of denitrification. Um, and also, we after the calibration, we ex extrapolate our modeling uh, for a larger area. So we did it for basins. So those are basin four, five, six, basin C twenty three, basin C twenty four, and those are actually numbers of canals. Um, this area is again is uh, heavily controlled by drainage canal. So, um, I will keep this presentation short, and this is just a summary. Excuse me. So, if you are interested in this modeling effort, you can uh, read our reports in our paper. So, essentially, uh, this is a summary of this pr uh, this training video. So, uh, for this area, there is no set specific data collected during the project. So that means we know very little about the flow and the transport and uh, nitrogen transport in this area. So all our understanding is based on historical data or data far away from the site. And um, But we 
made effort to compile historical data and select calibration data. And we did calibration and we ran the model and we can tell how much nitrogen um, is removed um, by removing safety tank. And so uh, the city and county can use it for their BMAP uh, uh, activities. Um, so uh, in the next presentation, we're going to talk about our modeling effort at Indian, uh, Indian River County. So at that um, uh, for that modeling, so we installed the set, uh, monitoring wells, and we have more data, and uh, we're going to talk more um, in, in the training video part 12.